Art Blitz. I'm your host, Matt Gleason. Today's show, jam-packed with many guests, so let's get started. I've got two curators, two, count them, two curators, and they're working on one, count it, one show, Lisa Derrick and Rodrigo Rivera Dierbe. Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Hey, How are you guys doing? Really good, Matt. It's nice. To, it's kind of nice to be on the couch for a change. You know, get on that couch and stay there. Um, hey, so 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 tell me, uh, it's a long name. Explain the name. Tell us the name and explain the name and explain your show. You're a curator. You have to answer for this show. Dark Progressivism: The Built Environment, which opens November 11th at MOA, and the opening reception is from two to six. And Rodrigo's really the best person to explain the concept of the built environment and dark progression. What is a built environment? That's a good question. So the built environment is really, um, there's no, numerous ways to look at the built environment. It's so nuanced, the, the concept of it. So we can look at it through ideas of urban planning, through sociology, through landscape, topography, whatever. So it's a, it's a concept that is used often in the social sciences. And so my concept of looking at art through that perspective um, and through a lot of the work that I do is based on the built environment. So uh, that's the decision that, I mean, we decided to go with that for that reason. It would be everything from freeways, housing projects, um, housing developments, and how the, the man-made environment impacts the natural environment and the people who live in it. And how many artists are in this show? Because it's a big museum show. Did you try to pack it full of, I mean, how do you, how do you fill it, how do you fill the show? We have about 30 artists. 30? 30. Wow. Wow. Okay, okay. So, so, so tell me, uh, can you name them all? Ah, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding, just kidding. <laughs> we don't have enough you got, time you for looked, that. You looked mortified. No, I hey. probably could actually. So, so, um, so, uh, in planning the show, uh, how long has the show been in planning? Uh, you're working out in Lancaster. Do you have to commute there every day from, uh, from, uh, from, you know, from LA? I mean, how do you, what do you do? When Rodrigo and I met two years ago, two and a half years ago, we wanted to do a museum show based on the style of art, which draws from German expressionism, film noir and contemporary California design mid-century and on, but as seen through the eyes of tattooing, graffiti, and it's just how they meld together into a uniquely Southern California art style. Um, we've gone up to, we started the hardcore planning a year ago. We got approval to do the show in April and that's when we just slammed it through. So you're, you got approval at, at uh, Museum of Art and History Lancaster. Yes. And now there's a number of other shows opening, so it's, it's kind of like a, 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 a big event to go out to uh, Lancaster. Yes. Uh, you got 30 art, oh, man, do, do you have to like get a car for each of the artists? No. No? No, they're gonna carpool. Oh, wow, that's gonna be one hell of a carpool oh, out yeah. to it's Lancaster. Gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. We could do that song, We Gotta Work in Convoy. Okay, never mind. <laughs> um, You're gonna, there's, no, there's no convoy from, from no, LA to, to no Lancaster, convoy, but, but it's gonna be a good night November 11th. Yeah. Now, now uh, who was the artist that you absolutely had to get that epitomizes the built environment? Wow. Uh, that's, that's, <laughs> if you name one, you don't have to name them all. Sorry, guys, come yeah, on. No, there, there's, there's, I think that one, one piece that definitely it codifies it would be Jim McHugh's Washington Boulevard, which is a photograph by Jim McHugh, who is, um, he's, he's, in, he's um, a staff photographer for Architectural Digest. He's shot celebrities, and he loves shooting Los Angeles. It, it tells stories to him. He takes these giant Polaroids, and on those he has prime and big sleeps or prime or big sleeps to one of the two or both paint and letter them so you get the background of architecture with incredibly stylized and elaborate lettering and numbers okay and uh what year was the portrait of washington boulevard taken is it, it's an it's an older photo. No, no, it's it's new. Oh, it's 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 more it's a more recent photo. It's a there's recent no there's, photo. so this is not a show about nostalgia. This is a show about, about the contemporary now. existence. Yes, we yeah. have 
um, work by Eva Malhotra, which is scrapings out of um, wood layered with acrylic. We have another piece by Susan Logarici, which complements it, called LA Plays Itself, which has freeways and different uh, topographical elements blocked out, plus photographs by Luis Jacinto, Estefan Oriol, and Edwin Racinos of Los Angeles and its inhabitants. Okay, so did you guys, let's just get to the gossip. Did you guys fight about any artists? Like, she wanted someone, you didn't want him? I'm just, I'm... <laughs> no, I mean... <laughs> 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 no, no comment! <laughs> no, there were, there well, were, you're obviously there, still talking, so... Yeah, no, there were a couple pieces that we... Um, uh, there were artists that were on our must-have, can non-negotiable list, and then we had a lot of room to go, yes, this person, no, this person. And the entire next two months at MOA are called Imagine Angelinos, and it's um, four different shows, um, Linda Vallejo, Abel Alejandre, Kenny Gonzalez Day, and then our show. And this is the first time that MOA will have their um, giveaway program and the didactics, which is the fancy word for the stuff you stick on the walls, in English and Spanish. It's a huge deal. We've impacted the built environment through our show. And so uh, when you were planning this show, was it always envisioned for MOA? I mean, MOA, I mean, it's, it's, it's such a big, great space. I mean, were, did you envision, like, we've got to do this show at MOA? Or, I mean, did you think about doing it? I mean, is this a show that could travel? It's a show that could travel, but MOA was our first choice because MOA shows contemporary and modern art focusing on post-World War II, and that's where this falls into place. Okay, okay. And it's almost World War III now. I know, don't even, don't go there. Don't. And so, so uh, uh, is this, uh, how long have you been curating, Lisa? Um, I started with you in 2013 at your first. Don't make this so chummy now, okay? <laughs> um, my first show was in 2013. It was a one night pop up with you. And then in 2014, I did a month long show at Coagula called Two Johns and a Whore. Okay, Rodrigo? Uh, it's difficult for me to consider myself a, a curator or experienced curator. Uh, Lisa and I have uh, curated five shows now. Um, That's pretty experienced. In my, <laughs> I, you know, five, I, you know. Uh, I'm just a quick you yeah, know. I'm, still, I'm still trying to figure it out and kind of navigate that world, but, you know, I'm more of a writer, filmmaker, uh, you know, that's, that's my cup of tea. That's where I feel more comfortable in. But, and you two um, worked on a movie together, right? Yeah, so the, the show is based on the strength of the movie, so... It's in a way, it's kind of a cinematic approach to the artwork, you know, and it's um, it tells the narrative of the built environment in in film context, and now we're doing it in the, in the show, and so that was the approach that we had with the museum was to do a show that can reflect uh, the film with artists that are in the film that tells a similar story, and so that's what we that's what we hope to impact, you know, with this with this exhibition. All right, and so you two met on the, making the movie together, or how did you how did you meet? I had written an article about the Museo in Anaheim, which had pressured a curator to shut down a show that, because they felt it was gang influence. Who did you write the article for? LA Weekly. Okay. Rodrigo read it, tracked me down, we met, and we hit it off. We have similar interests in film noir, we're both Los Angeles natives, and he was like, well, I'd kind of like to do a show about this, so I walked him over to a gallery, we pitched it to the gallery, and they said yes, and that wow. was it. So, uh, L.A. native, where did you, you go to high school? Losinger, which is in Lawndale. I grew up by the L.A.X. Up airport. Lawndale? No, I grew up in Lenox. Oh, okay. Which is by the L.A.X. airport, but uh, the school that we went to was uh, Losinger, or Hawthorne was the choice. There wasn't uh, Lenox High School. Uh, that was back in the 60s or 70s, something like that. Oh, okay, okay. You look so young. Yeah, <laughs> I know, exactly. So, okay, I'm excited for November 11th. Yes. And there's, oh, there's Susan Logarici right there. You know, Susan has a, uh, a Bergamont station. Uh, she has the um, art on the, the, yeah. pl the train platform. Yeah. And so, so everybody goes to see art, and the first art they see is now hers at the, at the train station. And we also have art by... Um, you named a lot of... Look, look. look you we, named we 30 have, people. Yeah, we, yeah. we have, but the, two of our artists are featured on the expo line, and then so is Abel. So it's... Metro plays a okay. part in the built it's, environment. It's, it's uh, well, and it is part of the built environment, it is. right? It is. So, um, 
So November 11th, I hope to see you up there. Well, Saturday, November 11th, I hope all of you can make it out to the Museum of Art and History uh, out Ta in Lancaster. Tacos on the roof. Let me, let me ask you one more thing. Yes. When's it up till? January 14th. 2018. 2018. All right, you heard it here first. I'll see you there last. We'll be back right after this.